my computer so I can see what you guys are, are saying. Um, I hope everybody had a great weekend. I, this day, this day has flown by. Absolutely crazy. I hadn't even had lunch yet. And my <laughs> and I look up and my daughter's like, it's three o'clock. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Hi, Angel. Where did the day go? All right. She's Angel says, ready to learn. Good job, guys. <laughs> you guys make me so happy. Okay. Let me go to YouTube real quick. If you're joining me on YouTube, let me say hi. <clears throat> I'll give you guys the 411 here in a minute. Hi, Linda. Thanks for joining us. So Monday is my show where I ask, uh, answer questions from viewers. And we've been in a series uh, this whole month of January that I was calling Featherweight University. And it's a, a mini class. Hi, Kathy Klein from Illinois on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Um, these are mini classes for my, um, for my tribe. What's wrong, babes? Ray, my executive producer, is over here. She's just making every, sure everything's good. Bunny! Hi, Bunny! Did you send me those cute blocks via, like, a we, text message email thing today? I, it didn't say Bunny Pelton, but I thought it was your number. Um, so, hi, Jen Jen. So, basically, I'm going to say hi to a few friends, and then we're going to get rolling with some good stuff. Um, this is my opportunity to hang out with my featherweight tribe. They are located all over the world. Uh, and so I just like to say hi to some friends and then we'll get rolling with the good, with the good stuff. <laughs> oh, hi, oh, here. Okay, Beth. <laughs> hi, Linda from Michigan and Allison from Plano. I know Frisco. Plano is just above Frisco. My sister lived there for years. Um, let's see. So Jen, Jen, Lisa's here. Hello. Lisa says Hi. Ray, um, hi from Lord and Lady Mitchell. Really, Mel? Hi, Joe. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> okay, Bonnie, that was you. I, I thought so. I was like, is this Bonnie Pelton? <laughs> and hello, Donna from Kansas and Missy from Redmond. My, my good old buddy around the corner from me here in Redmond, Washington. Oh, Joanne's on from Mississippi, and Pauline's here from Texas. Nancy, hi, how are you from Lake Stevens? Uh, Jackie from Illinois, waiting on snowstorm to hit six to eight inches. We were supposed to get snow this week, and they they changed it. So I think we actually had sun today in Seattle in January. So that is pretty awesome. Well, I wanted to show you guys. Hi, Indiana present with Elizabeth Sowers. <laughs> Uh-oh, Bridget in Rimrock, Arizona says it is snowing. Yikes, you guys. Take it easy out there. All right, well, let's get started on some fun stuff. So this is our final Featherweight University. I'm calling it Mini Class 104, Tips and Tricks. Uh, we have been meeting consistently for the last couple of weeks on Mondays. Starting next week, we're going to be back to um, our regular programming for lack of a better term which is where I just answer viewer questions um what I, I uh my friend Lisa <laughs> she had to fix my button uh my friend Lisa and Mesa said Scottsdale Arizona had snow today what the what <laughs> we lived in Scottsdale for about four years that would have been crazy <laughs> take your snow back <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> 74 in Alabama, Jen Jen says. That's more like it. Hi, Kelly and Sisters Oregon. Three to four inches today. You girls are hardier than I am. I, I don't know. I, I like my moderate, you know, Seattle, gloomy, doomy weather. I don't know if I could do snow on a regular basis. 30, did, you, did I say 36? 36 degrees at Sky Harbor in Phoenix today. Well, hello. <gasps> Hi, Lawrence. <gasps> Uh-oh. you That's why you haven't been on is you got sick. You got the Ronas. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad you're okay. Welcome back. We've missed you. <laughs> C72 in Mississippi. Maybe I'm like a southern gal at heart. I don't know if I could tackle the accent, though. People would say, you're not from around here, Darlene, are you? No. 
no, I'm not. <laughs> hi, Lisa from, or Lisa, hi, Linda from Tennessee. All right, guys, it's melting, it's melting and sisters. All right, let's get on to the fun stuff. I was just on Instagram and I was showing everybody what I was working on this weekend. Look at my tulip pink quilt, it's coming together. That's three of the 13 blocks. Uh, the fourth one is, I'd say 80%. All my little four inch squares are completed. I just haven't actually constructed the on point block. Ooh, you guys, that's rough. All the roads are closed up. Yeah, I bet. With that snow in Arizona, people must be freaking out. Not know what to do. Oh, Lawrence, I'm so sorry. He says he's slowly improving. We'll send prayers and healing thoughts your way, you poor guy. Um, <clears throat> well, this weekend, I didn't. I promised myself I wasn't going to work. Um, although I did land up working a little on Saturday. Because even though I say that, then I land up working. Um, we did... Uh, I did some, uh, what did I do on Saturday? Oh, I, I bound, uh, a, a, a friend's quilt for her little granddaughter. It was the rainbow quilt. I posted it on my, uh, on my story this week. Bonnie, aren't these awesome? Love, 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 love. Um, so I did work a little bit, but that's okay. Lisa, I'm going to need the address in Arkansas too. Will you email it to me so I can get it off to Riley this week? So I didn't know, but yesterday and Saturday were the calm before the storm. <coughs> Hi, Lisa. I had 30 people sign up for my um, expo class at the um, my virtual expo workshop for featherweights. And then they added a second class because they had so many people signed up, which is amazing, except that it's, you know, it, they all started kind of coming in. And a lot of people from Canada, which was really cool, but my website isn't really set up to ship internationally, so that was kind of complicated. Um, but we've been working through it today. I've had Ray and my other part-time gal here, um, and so the three of us have been having fun in the garage packing kits. <laughs> Reagan's like, fun is a strong word, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Annette from Kansas. Oh, Jen Jen, wasn't that quilt so pretty? So that was one, I didn't say it in the description. That was basically just one cut of fabric of 108 inches wide backing that went from that beautiful color, that ombre color rainbow gradation and the little, little Missy Riley, who's four, loves rainbows. And so I quilted Baptist fans in. So it looked like the rainbows were in the rainbow. Um, it was like a double rainbow. <laughs> Hi, Noretta from Iowa. Thanks for joining us in Miss Mel, Lord and Lady Mitchell. She says, is there a space left for me in your workshop? So my friend, I think, so they've opened up a second workshop. And that one was also running a wait list. But if you get on, um, then if enough people sign up, there might be a third. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't done so already and you're interested, this is that February, I think it's the 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th. It's the Wednesday through the Sunday. Um, so anyway, check it out. That's one of the really cool things about having it virtual this year is where there wouldn't have been classroom space. <laughs> Hi, Denise. Denise is watching from Idaho. Hello, evil twin Denise. Um, uh, this, because it's virtual, they'll, they can add classes in as long as I'm available. So, and I basically have just scheduled myself out that whole week. We might be taking girls and guys who are doing the quilt as you go. We might be taking that week off. I think I'm going to be way overextended, um, time-wise. So we might, that might be a bye week for us just because I'm so crazy. Hi, Wendell from South Carolina. It says, love my featherweights. I love your featherweights too. <laughs> I have a few here and more that you can't see behind camera. Hi, Margaret. Big hall and rainstorm. Big hail and rainstorm here in Surprise. Oh, you're in Surprise. That's fun. Arizona. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, Beth. Thank you, Beth. Patrick said the dates are the 24th through the 27th. Thank you, my dear. All right. Let's get to the fun stuff. So if you are new to Featherweights, we have been doing a fun... Um, series called Featherweight University. Tonight is tips and tricks. So let's go ahead and get into our um, stuff here. We have Ray's uh, machine with us tonight, B. Uh, her name is B. 
I say like Bumblebee, but she's like Beatrice. I'm like, okay, Ray, you're in charge. Um, <clears throat> and she is a beautiful 19, I think she's a 50, mm -hmm. a 50 non-centennial edition. We painted her. Um, and we didn't use the best paint. It was when we first started painting and we learned a lot of stuff painting this machine and the Minnie Mouse machine. And so anyway, this machine will probably be forever in our house because the paint isn't really holding up. It requires a lot of touch up. It's important that you use really high quality paint when you're painting these things, which we figured out after our first two. <laughs> okay, so the first tip that there's actually three things I want to touch on right out of the gate that will really kind of fi uh, mess you up right uh, when you're getting used to using featherweights. The first one is making sure that your needle is inserted properly and facing the correct direction and threaded the right direction. Um, featherweights are a little bit different because they the needle the front side of the needle is actually on the inside of the machine actually let's look a little closer here um so your inside of your machine this is the needle is the front of the needle on the inside of the bed of the machine which means that the flat part of the needle is going parallel to the outside of the machine so when inserting your needle, it will go in any way, but only one way is right. Unlike your modern machines that have a guide, so therefore, um, isn't that, it is, this is Ray's machine, Mel, and it is faster than lightning. Hi, Odie, I love getting your messages today, by the way, thank you for messaging me. Um, Odie was telling me about her machine, her Vivienne machine. <laughs> so much fun. So the needle, the flat part of the needle faces the outside of the machine signifying the back of the needle. So therefore when you're threading the needle, you thread it from the inside of the machine to the out. Um, so that's rule number one that will get you. <clears throat> the next thing that will get you is the bobbin. I'm gonna turn this light off just so it doesn't get you. The bobbin not going in right. So if you look here, actually I think I'm going to unplug this because I really don't need it on. So the bobbin is also important. I think I'm going to show this for, to you from the um, from the bigger screen here. Um, so we are looking at the bobbin. The bobbin, so needle in right and threaded right. Bobbin in right and threaded right. So the, the bobbin is, you put the bobbin in so that your tail, I'm going to do this over my shoulder so it's the same way for you goes up over to the left, the thread goes up over the top to the left, making the letter P, okay? P like produce, P. And then when you put it in, you put it into the bobbin with the thread going up and over to the left, and then while holding it with your thumb, you're gonna thread it through the tension plates. Let me show this to you close up here. You're gonna thread it through the tension plate and out through the little out through the little um, tension plate that looks like a snake's tongue. And then once your thread is in that way, uh, that's threaded properly. And then real quick, you're gonna just do a sanity check. It's gonna look clockwise in this because the camera's backwards, but the bobbin is swinging counterclockwise. That's the way it should be swinging. P like pretty, exactly, Angel. That's good, <laughs> like produce. Where the heck is my mind? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Ray is chatting with people. Okay, I don't need to worry about that. So, needle and right, bobbin and right, and this one will get even the most seasoned featherweight user. So, every once in a while, we'll go show you close up here, you'll need to remove this throat plate to dust underneath it because if you let uh, an abundance of lint pile up underneath here, pretty soon you'll start skipping stitches and get everything all gunked up. So I'd say once a project, you're gonna to wanna to remove this throat plate, take these little flathead screws out and take this off and dust underneath there. And then it is oh so important when you go to put her back together, this is the bottom of that throat plate. Do you see how there's a little notch in here? And then, oh, I can't see it too well. There's a finger or a notch that seats in the northern or 12 o'clock position 
and it needs to be seated in this in this gap right here so it doesn't spin around. The minute you take this thing off, it will start to free spin. And so you have to make sure it's reseated in the northern or 12 o'clock position. Otherwise, the machine won't sew. So those are the three things that will take down even the most seasoned featherweight user. Needle in wrong. That, this just happened to me the other day with a friend from Knoxville. She has six featherweights and one was just not stitching and it turned out it was because she put the needle in right but then threaded it from back to front and not front to back. So this will get everybody um, bobbin and then making sure that that little notch is seated underneath the groove on the throat plate. So those are the three things that are the most common kind of trip ups um, in the featherweight world. So I wanted to talk about those first right off the bat. You can see at my super professional napkin, I wrote my notes down to you. <laughs> Hi, Sandy from Florida. How you doing today? Mm. Thank you, Angel. She says she likes my green, my green fingernails. What is the back clip? Oh, the black, this, uh, someone wants to know, actually, let's go to the close-up on that. I vouch for the finger notch thing. <laughs> exactly, Jeanette. This is a thread cutter. One of the most common complaints I get from people is that there's, first of all, no needle threader on the machine. That's a very common complaint. Can't do too much about that. You can use those little things that look like coins, they work really well. But the other one is that it doesn't have a cutter because there is cutters on the back of the shafts, but it gets in the way of presser feet and it, they're so dull they don't work anyway. This is a modern day replacement that sticks onto your chrome faceplate. It won't corrode or eat anything, um, but it acts as a thread cutter. Um, it was created by a company that was on Shark Tank that was for cutting fishing lures. And then his mom was like, hey, we could put that on the front of my antique sewing machine. And then I would have a modern day thread cutter on it. So her son developed a whole new um, sewing vertical just for his mom. I met her, she's very sweet. So that's what this is right here. <laughs> that's where you write, I'm glad, Sandy, I am not the only one that writes their grocery lists on a napkin. Right, Jen Jen? <laughs> Uh, Lint was so, th yes, yes, Mel, someone needed to clean that out. Are you going to teach us during the featherweight you how to free motion quilt with it? Maybe that can, oh, Angel, would you like that to be a class for next week? We could totally do a demo next week. Let's do it. All right, guys, you're the first to know. Next week's featherweight university mini class 105 is free motion quilting. How about that? Oh, we'll call it, it, it'll be like a bonus class. Right, Angel? <laughs> oh, Joanne Keeney says, love my thread cutter. They're the best. I mean, I always have a little pair of scissors around, but now I don't have to have it so close at hand. I can just chink, chink, chink every time I finish a, every time I finish a cut. Okay, next thing. If you have been sewing for a while on your feather rate, like you're at a retreat and you've been sitting there a while and your body starts telling you, you need a break, chances are pretty strong that your machine needs a break either. Using her for hours and hours and hours without giving her a break is not particularly good on the motor. So think about that. When your body needs a break, you need to stand up and walk around, you need to use the restroom, you need to get some water, your machine probably needs a break too. And if you walk away from her, make sure you take the power cord out of her side because otherwise she's technically still on because there's still current coming from the wall. So when you take a break, just unplug her from the side. Let her have a little break. You have a break. Everybody will be happy. So that's another tip that uh, I have tried to adhere to over the years because I can definitely get a little tunnel vision when I'm working on something. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Odie says, uh, gro Alexa grocery shopping list. What saves me? No, I have to have a paper, paper in my hand. <laughs> Lisa puts her lists on her phone so that she doesn't lose them. I will say, and my husband loves to point this out, that I will painstakingly make like a grocery shopping list and then leave it on the darn counter and go to the grocery store without it. If it was in my phone, that wouldn't happen, right? The other little, the next little tip or trick Come, over, come with remover, what is, oh, 
is the LED light bulbs. Oh, Reagan is, oh, she's like, <laughs> can I have it now? Thank you. She's priceless, you guys. <laughs> is a light bulb. Um, it might seem obvious to people that they want a brighter workspace. So that's why most people get the LED light bulbs, which we sell for only $13 on the website. But it actually goes beyond just you being able to see better. Um, here you can see how bright, how much brighter the light is. I'll turn on Ray's B here. There we go to the, there. So you can see how much brighter, can you show the lower? <laughs> Um, how much brighter this is. Uh, and it's also not yellow, it's a white light. Okay, let's go. Um, but the fact that this heats up and it can burn you or your fabric, I've had a good friend of mine named Julie in Scottsdale had a tan machine and her light bulb would literally scald her fabric. Not that one, the original. The, the original one, not, thank you, the, not the LED ones. The reason why I bring it up is if it's getting that hot in the neck of the machine, chances are that it's swelling all of the metal sitting behind it, including the steel gears underneath the spool pin, which will what will happen is you'll be sewing for a while and then all of a sudden your machine will start to slow down and seem sluggish. It's because your light with the old incandescent light bulbs the heat from the light has swelled the gears and literally has put additional load on the motor, slowing your machine down. The new LED light bulbs do not um, get hot like that. They don't burn you, they don't swell the gears. We sell ours on the website. It comes with this free little tool for removing the old incandescent light bulbs because they're super, well, they're kind of fat and you can't get your fingers into the lamp to get around the light half the time and so when you buy a light bulb from us you get a free remover with it so thank you ray for product placement she's so good all right i got some questions here uh should, oh, 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 oh so many questions <laughs> you guys i love you <laughs> never make me feel like i'm alone it's just amazing sounds like you need a designated power strip to turn savant yes 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 power strips are a good idea um lots of people love their bulb so you should keep your machine, oh, for sure, Miss Bridget, especially in Arizona, girl. You guys have electrical storms all the time. Um, you definitely do not keep your feather rate plugged in when you are not using it because there is current drawing from the wall. The switch on the top of the machine or on your lamp, depending on which factory your machine came out of, only turns the light on and off. There's, you can still sew with it with the light off. So that's why you never leave it plugged into the wall. Yes, yes, yes. Odie phone app used to. <laughs> you're, Odie, you're not going to convert me. I'm a paper list kind of gal. You sound like my husband. I'm going to start calling you Andy. Andy have Apple, not Alexa. Yeah, and we're a Hey Siri family. Oh, now she's going to start listening because I said her name. Not Alexa. <laughs> oh, Ray went ahead and put the um, link to the light bulbs in the feed if you guys are watching for it. So, Anyway, that's the big deal with the light. That's another like $13 tip and trick that will elongate the life of your machine and save your eyeballs, which is a good thing. All right, and the last and thing, hands. what? And your hands. Yeah, and, and your, your hands. hands. And, and your, your fabric. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, let's get the close up on the machine again. Oh, she's Say listening. Hi, Faye. How you doing, sweetheart? Um, is this knob right here? Do you guys see this knob right here? What this is, is this is not a commonly known um, apparatus. All right, we can go. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> don't you stick your tongue out at me, young lady. I see that, Odie. I see that. <laughs> you do spy with your little eye Wednesday's project. But what are you talking about, Mel? Ooh, there she is. <laughs> I guess every, the cat's out of the bag. We are doing the tree block for our Quilt As You Go on Wednesday. All right, what was I saying? Oh, the pressure foot tension. So if you are experiencing sewing that kind of looks like it's gathering, it's because your pressure foot tension is too tight and it's pinching your fabric in the, between the pressure foot 
and the feed dogs. So sometimes your little presser foot knob, let's go close in on that, needs to be loosened. So it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. You can make rather large, um, some of the adjustments on this machine are very small and minute. This is not one of those. You can actually move this quite a bit. I usually leave mine sitting, geez, what is that? Uh, maybe about a little less than a quarter inch off of the machine. When I free motion quilt, I usually have to lower this, so I righty tidy it down almost to touching the machine when I'm free motion quilting. We can talk about that next week, right, Angel? Um, but it usually sits right about here for straight quilting. So if you're noticing, <clears throat> up top here, if you're noticing a rather large, like kind of a pinching and a gathering of the fabric, then um, you probably have your presser foot tension too tight. Or if you're noticing that like your thread is snapping quite a bit, it may not necessarily even be a thread tension thing. It might be that your presser foot tension is too tight. So those are the, the list of things that kind of commonly get people when they're learning how to use the featherweights. My whole, <laughs> you guys are funny. My whole thing, there are two colors. They are two colors, right? Kelly, are you talking about the fa the thing for Wednesday? Two colors on on YouTube. Um, so I wanted to make a list of items that kind of commonly mess people up. The ones that we just discussed are definitely things that will mess even the most seasoned, um, even the most seasoned user up. I I generally like to reduce people's frustrations with these. Oh. There only are one color of light bulb. It's just the white. I have seen the yellow LED light bulbs available. Um, I personally like to see kind of the true color of the fabric and not it under a yellow tin. So I definitely have white lights. I only carry the white lights and don't carry the yellow. Yeah, the natural or the yellow. Uh, mine is a bright white, just one color available. Fast, yes, you do need a fast machine for free motion quilting. But I do know lots of people that like a slower speed machine because they just feel like the faster ones kind of get away from them. It's just a matter of like um, governing the speed of your hands when your machine is moving a little slower. Um, it's just practice is all it is. I can I can do free motion stitches on any speed machine, in, including the most fast modern machine you can find. But you know, most people just get used to the speed of their of whatever featherweight they're using. I have a friend who I think is listening in Sammamish who has a couple of different featherweights. Um, Vera is for piecing. Her Vera is for piecing, and her machine Betty is strictly set up for free motion because Betty moves at a slower pace, and it, um, Kelly feels like it doesn't get away from her. So <laughs> Joanne says, "I need slower." <laughs> <laughs> your featherweight's too fast. I don't usually hear people complain about their featherweight being too fast. There is some little adjustments you can make to your foot pedal. Hi, Pam from Louisiana. Thanks for joining us today. All right, well, those are all of the tips and tricks I have for you for this little mini session. And I just want to thank everybody for joining me. My block is made because I'm going to try to get the instructions out for the Quilt As You Go folks here in the next day or so. So definitely before I go to bed tomorrow night. So that way you East Coast people and also people that are outside of the country uh, can get their stuff in time for Wednesday morning and have enough to cut. The block is um, has a lot of pieces uh, this week. So I apologize in advance. There's a lot of different pieces to cut. Um, I did it so that if you wanted to make it a little scrappier, like the snowball quilt or snowball blocks from last week, you could. Um, or you, I just used a solid color green out of my stash. I didn't even, it was just a fat quarter I had lying around. So thank you, Jennifer, for watching. Hoff Pierre, how do you say that? Polaire, pretty. Oh, you're so sweet. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs> The bee's knees, I don't get called that very often. <laughs> All right, friends, I'm going to jump off. Um, thank you for joining me. My next, my next live is on Wednesday for the Quilt As You Go. 
If you are, have you paid your entrance fee and you'll be joining me, you'll be getting your cutting instructions on Tuesday evening, my time. Uh, and then I do angel sell the free motion quilting foot. I think Ray is linking it right now, so I'll talk for another minute or so. Um, Friday night is my, uh, my sip and sew. Oh, it's Huff Power. Oh, okay. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> Um, I think the free motion quilting feet we sell are $11.95. Very reasonable. I have a Bernina, and everything for that machine costs $150. Like, even a new presser foot costs $150. It's refreshing that the feather rates are, are not like that. So, um, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I guess I'll see you guys on Wednesday. I'll be on Instagram for like 10 minutes before the big show at 4 o'clock Pacific. Um, just kind of chatting with people and talking about my day. And then I'll be back on here, YouTube and Facebook at 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time for the Quilt As You Go demonstration. You can join in and uh, get the education for free. You don't have to have, uh, you know, pay the entrance fee. But yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. I